Hey, 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 guys. Hey, everyone. It is the Speak Easy podcast where we go behind the scenes talking about what it means to be the successfully paid speaker and author. I am your host, Altavis Pelzer, the voice coach coming to you, that part, founder of the World Voice League. Yes. Now, as we get ready to hit this new era in life, we get to hit this moment where we say the ball drops and everybody goes into that new year, new me mentality. I just wanted to come and give you guys some insight and some information and a little update. Uh, For one, we had such an amazing time this past weekend in Philadelphia doing the Love My Voice tour. Super, super excited. Shout out to all of those who were in attendance. Listen, great feedback. We appreciate the love. We appreciate the support. But not just that, guys. We appreciate the feedback. It's always room for improvement. So with that being said, that was the Love My Voice tour final Stop. And as we move into 2020, be on the lookout for new tour dates and updates to what we have done. So I'm super excited about today's episode. Why? Because as a speaker, as an author, as an entrepreneur, let's just be honest. Everybody is looking for the the way in. They're looking for the open door. They're looking for the opportunity to come and sit at the table. Now, is that an easy opportunity? No, it's not. Uh, Is it going to take some work? Yes, it does. But the number one resource for you being able to find speaking opportunities is always going to be you. Your action or lack of action will determine the events and opportunities that you have before you. Here's what I mean. So many people always ask me, how do you find speaking opportunities? I don't know where to go. Well, listen, I have four ways for you to be able to find speaking opportunities. Are you listening? Four ways. Why is that? I found that there have been so many people who struggle and go and get themselves into situations that are not ideal as a speaker coming into the industry simply because they think that those are the only opportunities. They think those are the only ways that they can make their way in to the speaking industry. And it's not. There are actually four ways for you to be able to do this and As I always tell you guys, I'm going to give you these four different ways, but you only need to act on one in order for you to see results. Act on one in order to see results. So with that being said, the four ways are ask, search, community, and create. Now, when you think about these four, you're going to say, well, they sound a little too simple, too real to be true. No, they really are true and they really do work. I've used them in my own business and brand and I've allowed my clients and showed my clients how to use it in theirs as well. These four options work, but they're only going to work to the capacity that you work them. So they work, but if you're not going to put in the extra effort and you're not going to be consistent about this and you're not going to do the follow through and follow up, then what's going to end up happening is no, they will not work for you. So it all goes back to you being your greatest resource. Number one, the ask. Now, some of you may say, well, no, this is not, it's not that and It's not that simple. It can't be that simple that I just go and ask somebody, do you need a speaker? But yes, it is. If you go to certain organizations and opportunities, events, and you reach out to them, they will tell you that they are looking for speakers in certain arenas. They are looking for opportunities. Or there may be even people who will say, they themselves may not need you as a speaker, but they know of an opportunity coming up. This is one of those areas that people fear because they think if I go and I ask somebody, then they're going to devalue the information that I'm giving or they're going to think that that I don't need to be paid or that I don't need to sell from the stage. No, you stand in your superpower, authentically you. Even if you ask for an opportunity, that does not negate the fact that you still need to get paid. 
It does not negate the fact that you can sell from the stage. It's just you networking. It's you having conversation. Some people do post online and do it. Some people do face-to-face conversation. Whatever the opportunity may be, here is how you make it work. Is I show up and I say, here it is. I'm showing up for this experience, for this opportunity, 100%. That's what people look for. They want to make sure that you're genuine and that you're about your business. Are you really here to show up and talk about what it is that you said you were going to talk about? So number one was the ask. Making sure that you're taking some time out to just ask, hey, does anybody know of any events that are coming up that may need a speaker? Does anybody know of... uh, a school that's looking for someone to come and speak on this topic. Being clear and concise about what it is that you are looking for will also allow this opportunity to um, to engage with people, benefit you even more because they know exactly what type of speaker you are. They know exactly what topics you're hitting on. Or if you big, bad, and bold, you might even want to slide through and give them a few topics that you talk about specifically. That leads to number two, the search. Can I tell y'all something? Uncle Google and Aunt YouTube are snitches. (laughs) Facebook is a snitch. Uh, You still have places like Gig Salad and things of that nature. Guys, remember, there are so many opportunities out here. You sometimes just got to open your eyes and look for them. Do a search for speaking events, conferences on healthcare, conferences on relationships. Do the work. Now, I, I get it. We want somebody to be able to hand us all of this information, and, and that's cool. I got it. All right, understandable. But here's the thing. If you're not willing to put in the energy and the effort to go out there and go after the things, then are you really that dedicated to this being your full-time gig? Are you really that dedicated to this being the life you want to live as a speaker? Because guess what? If you were a contractor and you were doing floors, you would go out into the places where people need floors done. Or you would go and find the connections so that way you would have contracts continuously. Stop, stop, stop thinking that I can only show up once and I'm going to have everything work out in my favor. It doesn't work that way. I wish it did. Sorry, but it doesn't. So searching is very valuable and very important for you. That may mean giving yourself a day each week that you do some searches, giving yourself some time each day that you do a little bit of searching. Whatever it is, be consistent in your effort for searching. If you're not consistent in your efforts for searching, then are you have to really dis- decide is this really what I want to do because we have to remember becoming a paid speaker is so much more than just speaking from the event it's so much more than you doing a keynote and getting paid $20,000 because just coming in that's not necessarily what you're going to get paid you have to have a strategy and a plan that will work for you And you can't always rely on the strategy that somebody else used because that strategy strategy will not necessarily work for you. It won't. And there'll be many times where you'll go and try to use somebody else's strategy and you find yourself completely demolished and destroyed and frustrated and ready to quit because you're looking at what somebody else did to be successful and thinking that that's going to work for you as well. Number three is my most valuable one, and that's community. Now, I know I just told you, well, if you go and ask on Facebook, but no, I'm talking about the speaking community. Can I tell y'all something? If you come into this community and you come in with a heart of service, you come in with the right mind, you come in knowing your stuff, or even come in just eager to learn, there are always going to be some people that are good for you and some that are not. Some that are good for you are some of the speaker bureaus and the speaker associations that are out there because they show you how to show up. 
Not just that, they share with you opportunities. I know, for instance, I'm a part of the Black Speakers Network. Shout out to Brian J. Olds. We just had the holiday mixer in Baltimore yesterday. Uh, you, Not yesterday, the day before. <laughs> but you have to understand, me being connected to Black Speakers Network allows me to tap into a resource They send us speaking opportunities. Like, guys, are you missing? Are you hearing this? And actually, if you go back through some of the older episodes, you'll see that I did an episode with Brian J. Olds while we were at SpeakerCon uh, in Arlington, Virginia, just not too many months ago. You have to have this understanding. The community that you're in is going to uh, foster change, but it's also going to foster growth because change and growth aren't necessarily the same. And a lot of people use them interchangeable, but growth is maturity. Change does not necessarily mean to have to mature. There's some things that I just have to change sometimes. So being in one of these communities gives you access. You have Women's Speakers Association. You have some of the other communities. You have the World Voice League. Shout out to the World Voice League, uh, where we go and we share opportunities with you as well. So you have these different communities that you can be a part of where you'll get opportunities. Here's the thing. I get so many people who are scared to go and get into a community Because they think, oh, but it's a saturated market. Oh, but if I go into the community, then what about the fact that it's more than one person that speaks on the same topic? What am I supposed to do then? And they get into this fear. Because they start to really uh, compare themselves and question if they're good enough. Here's the thing. You are most definitely good enough. You are. So stop that. Quit that noise. Go ahead and show up and sign up. Get into a community where you'll find the support and you'll also be able to find the resources and to some great speaking opportunities. Because I'm going to tell you one thing before I get into number four. When you're not in communities like Black Speakers Network, like uh, Women's Speaker Association, uh World Voice League, when you're not in communities like this, what ends up happening is you end up getting opportunities thrown at you that are not meant for you or opportunities that are not moving you towards your vision. And I can I can guarantee you that if you ask any number of speakers There's a majority of them that can tell you that when they first started, they were not connected to a community. And so they found themselves speaking at events that were not um, nurturing to the vision that they were trying to achieve. They went and spoke at events that their, their target audience wasn't even in the audience, okay? But they were there, you know, out of the strength of experience. They were there out of the strength of my target may be in the audience was that waste a lot of time, energy, and money. When we think about the maybes that they might be in the audience, when we could actually be putting that money and time and effort into connecting with people that will give us opportunities where our target audience is most definitely in the audience. Guys, it makes a whole lot more sense for you to do the work Connect with the communities that are going to set you apart as opposed to just going ahead and trying to do it all on your own. Now, granted, I understand some of you may say budget, budget, budget. I don't have the money. I don't have the finances. I can tell you right now, the money that you put into connecting with the the right community will set you apart. There's always going to be a return on that investment. So thinking that you're setting yourself up and you're not going to receive a return, that's not it at all. You most definitely will receive a return on the investment when you go ahead and sign up for one of these organizations. And if you don't, that's when you go and you reevaluate and say, maybe this is not the organization for me. So if you're not getting opportunities that are uh, 
moving you closer to your vision, then you really have to ask yourself that question. Am I getting the most out of this community? Am I showing up? And then if I'm not, what do I need to change in order for me to get the value of this community? Or do I need to leave this community? I was just having a talk with one of my team members earlier, and we were talking about, you know, the groups on Facebook. And how we're all in all of these groups on Facebook. I think at one time I was in like 1,500 groups. That was back when Facebook just had people. You could just add people to groups. And I was in all strange groups that I have no idea why I was in them. But I am currently just made it down to under 100 groups. Yeah, that was a process. And I'm actually actively engaged in the majority of the groups that I am a part of right now. But I always say to them, are you earning or are you learning in the community? And if you're not earning or learning, then why are you in that particular community? We always have to be very honest with ourselves. Sometimes we're in a group just to support somebody. Sometimes we're in a community because it sounded good. They talked about making six and seven figures and we wanted to make six and seven figures. So we signed up. But are we really moving forward in being connected to that community. And so I found myself being connected to communities that were not moving me forward, that were not, like communities that had a thousand people in the community, but only three people posting. That, that's a clear indication that there's something wrong here, guys. Uh, And that I need to be putting my efforts and energy into a community where we're going to get exactly what it is we need. (laughs) That part. So, Go check out some communities that you can be a part of, that you can get the resources, the energy, the effort, everything that is that you need, because that is a great way for you to be able to find some speaking opportunities, that part. And take advantage of the opportunities in the community. Don't just sign up for the community just to get the emails or just to, no, sign up for the community and then show up. Y'all better catch that. Sign up. And then show up. That part. And then I have to go to the third, the fourth one, which was create. Creating your own speaking opportunities. Now, this has been the most interesting part of my journey so far. Because as a, eh, as a speaker, getting into the realm of being an event planner is hard work that people do not, do not value. Uh, It takes some effort, it takes time, it takes a team, it takes money, it takes community support. Uh, Man, it takes a lot. But when you do it the right way, you'll get some amazing support. So this weekend, we ended our last stop for the Love My Voice Tour. We're revamping it. Uh, It's going to be just for small business owners coming in 2020. And it was absolutely phenomenal. People came in from Baltimore, Virginia. People came in from Jersey, Delaware, Maryland. It was like, it was amazing. And I absolutely loved every bit of it. Why? Because guess what? It just showed the effort that I was putting out. It was being reciprocated. (laughs) But not just that. Uh, It showed growth. It showed you know, the responses that were coming from people were absolutely amazing, but it also showed my growth. I can go back to the first ever Love My Voice tour, and I was talking to my team, and I said, wow, I think the first Love My Voice tour, I didn't even speak. The first stop, I didn't even talk, because I was so drained and tired from trying to get everything perfect. I did not even talk, okay, that part. Uh, But there were some significant things that happened between that first one three years ago and the last one that just happened this weekend that I couldn't, I, I can't even put it in words the way it made me feel as a speaker to be able to not only be on the platform, create my own platform, but be able to open it up for other speakers as well along the way. So when I look at all of these things, It allows me to say, okay, wow, things are changing and growing. And with all of that, 
You know, I, I see the benefits of creating your own opportunities to speak. I do the Love My Voice tour. We have the World Voice Summit, which shout out to the team because the World Voice Summit is coming up again and they've been working their tails off behind the scenes, getting people registered and signed up. Sign up before January 15th. If you are a speaker, uh, registration is up until this 15th for you to be able to be on the Love My oh, the Love My Voice, the World Voice Summit. Uh, so if you go to bit.ly forward slash World Voice Summit 19, you can definitely come join us and be a part. There are some slots that are available and open. We want to make sure that we let you guys know that. Again, opportunities are all around. You say yes to the opportunity when it is available, that part. And you definitely don't want to miss out on this one. This is an international summit, virtual summit. The one that we had this year was our inaugural one this February. And we had 100 plus speakers. We had people listening in and watching from all over the world, as well as the speakers were from all over the world. We hit six continents, guys, when it came to the speakers that were on the platform. So creating opportunities like that to be able to give 100 plus speakers an opportunity to be on one platform was amazing. Creating opportunities like the Love My Voice tour was amazing. They were draining There was a lot that went into it, but I see the value in it. Now, I have to say this, that the fourth one was create. And just because it's a great opportunity, it's great to be able to create. Not everybody should create their own events. I'm just going to put it out there because most times you put out a lot of energy and effort to create an event. And so if you're not You know, if you're like, oh, you know, I want to create this event just so I can have a platform. Sometimes you're putting out more energy to create an event than you would to just find a platform that works best for you. So, again, you always have to look. I told you that's why I gave you four. And I said out of the four, implement one. Implement one. Don't think that you have to implement all four because you don't want to put yourself um, out there and stress yourself out, especially as we go into 2020. I have to believe, I highly believe that 2020 is going to be the year of people standing in their own, their own power and standing in their own strength and exactly who they are showing up authentically them. Why? Because that is how we are moving as social media is moving back to being social as, um, Different things are coming about and different uh, things are being shut down. You you see a shift happening. So if you show up authentically you, then the opportunities are going to come. It may take a little longer, but that's where that consistency comes in. People want to know that if they come back next week, you're still going to be there. They want to know that if they come back in three weeks, you're still going to be there. And if you're not, they want to be able to have a actual explanation of why (laughs) you may not be there. So I'm excited, super excited, guys. I wish you guys could hear and see all of the great things that have been going on in our team meetings and within our communities. It's about to go down. We have so many great things coming up. And so with that being said, if you have not done so already, make sure that you are in our free Facebook community. Go to bit.ly forward slash world voice community. bit.ly forward slash world voice community. That is our free Facebook group. We want to know what it is that you have going on. And there are always opportunities in there as well for you to collaborate. I think Tuesdays is our collab thread. So you just have an opportunity to go in there and connect with some other people. If you're doing a cross collaboration or if you're in search for something, that's the post that you want to go ahead and put that on. With that being said as well, make sure that you stay connected to the Speak Easy podcast. We would love to hear how this particular episode resonated with you. Did you like it? Did you love it? Was this stuff that you already knew or was it something that was brand new to you? (laughs) No matter what, we want to hear your feedback because your feedback allows us to be able to take this 
whole platform to a whole new level. bit.ly forward slash speakeasy podcast show all lowercase. Make sure that you come and leave us a review over on Apple Podcasts so that way we can know how we can serve you best coming into the 2020 year. Guys, it is almost 2020. That means it's time to get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it, get it, get it. It is time for us to do some things, make some moves, and really put ourselves on the map when it comes to being the paid, successfully paid speaker or author. With that being said, I appreciate you all. And until next time, guys, don't forget to press it out. See ya.